Welcome to another episode on the People Productivity Channel, where you are the product and a better you is the solution. Today we have on Tom Catalini, really interesting guy, has a very, very interesting blog. We're going to discuss some of the things that are in that, but he's an author, blogger, CIO, very successful guy. And Tom, welcome. Maybe you could just share a little more about yourself with our audience. Frank, thanks for having me. Really appreciate it. Uh, happy to be on the show. And uh, there's maybe no better place for me to be right now. Uh, yeah. When you talk about a better you, I feel like that's what I am trying to put forth in a lot of the content that I create mm -hmm. uh, on the blog and in the books I've published and the things I participate in. It's really um, questions I'm trying to ask and answer for myself and then share with others uh, around the world. Anybody who wants to read the blog and uh, hey, let's get the plug in right up front, right? Work smarter, Work stress, smarter less, stress less. less. It, it's a com. real interesting blog and you put fresh content out there every week. Yeah, so that's what I see as it's a, it's a job for me. It's sort of my side hustle is to create that content once a week. It's a, it's a promise I've made mm -hmm. to myself and to the audience. Um, and it's a good, healthy, healthy exercise I have found for me to clarify my own thinking, process things, and then put it out there. And then I love to hear from people who read the blog mm -hmm. and sign up on my email list to, uh, to hear some feedback and um, whether it's uh, a support for an idea, a critique of an idea, a new idea, a particular challenge they're struggling with. So I really love, as you do the human side of the work that we're all faced with, which because yeah. that's what really ties our work life and our personal life together was we really don't have a work life and a personal life where one person who is integrated in doing these things. And I think the more we synthesize those ideas, I know you believe in this in your work, the more mm -hmm. successful ultimately we're going to be in our work and also uh, maybe uh, better, better settled in our lives, right? We don't like that stress, that feeling yeah. of anxiety, that uncertainty, that uh, 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 cognitive dissonance can, that can come from feeling like we don't have everything in balance. Yeah. I mean, this is, uh, I love having you on because these are challenging times and people need to take a step back, rethink things, try new ways of doing things. And you've really confronted many of the issues in your blog. And maybe we could just, you know, really start going about, go through some of them right here. Sure. Um, so you talk about the importance of networking during a pandemic. Why don't we go into that a little bit, Tom? Yeah, and I think that's, a, so networking was important before the pandemic. It's important uh, during the pandemic and it will be important for all time. So, and I think a lot of us know and believe that and try to participate, but you know, the traditional things are now removed. So what do we do during yeah. the pa pandemic? Yeah, hey, I'd love to so, meet you for a cup of coffee. You know, that whole face-to-face, -face, let's get together, do a little networking, much harder now. That, and even the easier path is just showing up at events, right? But a big yeah. part of the reason you go to a conference or an event is you the serendipity of it, meeting somebody in the right line on. for coffee. Yep. yep, So right on. That is why people go to collect, you know, make uh, connections, you know, hook up on LinkedIn, stay in touch, hopefully. And now you are denied that. Yeah. And it reminds me of uh, when Eric Clapton uh, had the song Layla back on uh, some an old guy. Uh, so yeah. back in the days I of. I absolutely have always loved that song. I still think it's just got, man, it's just, it's one of those songs that just is eternal. It works. So do you remember when uh, MM, MTV Unplugged was a thing? And so you get an artist like an Eric Clapton who has a big electric band and you mm -hmm. put him in a room and they go acoustic, right? Yeah. And he did this new version of Layla. And I remember an interview that he did back then and he said, well, it was interesting to contemplate this song. What happens when you deny it the riff, right? So that, yeah. that catchy electric guitar riff is what is the hook for the song. It is. And so oh, he came up... Yeah. He came up with another incarnation of it that totally worked. It's beautiful, at, at least on the same level, if not better Motivated. than the original. I've got to go look this up now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. You should watch this and see if you can find the interview. So yeah. now we are denied the obvious path of yeah. uh, going to a network event, meeting up for coffee, or lunch, something like that. So what do you do? Uh, so I, I think it's something that we always should have been doing. It's something that I've been practicing yeah. myself, and that's what talking about the blog is just creating content and networking online and i think it's you know look at these uh, social channels have been around for decades now there's no excuse to not be on them that weirdly oh, used to gosh, be a debate you have to be on them yeah right 
And so, you know, you've got LinkedIn, you've got Twitter, you've got a blog, uh, you've now got podcasts, you've got video channels like we're doing yeah. right now. So there's a lot of ways that people can go out and just share what they're thinking, yeah. share their expertise, share their insight, share their perspective, and just put it out there and you will naturally attract other people. And what we talked about at the beginning, like for me personally, yeah. it's a personal exercise that is totally valuable for me. Even if nobody ever read the blog, it's, it's a useful exercise. So I believe in that wholeheartedly. And I think that, you know, the networking without being able to go out, you are still very much free to put digital content out there on a number of platforms, exercise your muscles in thinking and publishing content. It's a, might be a new experience for some. You can start yeah. small. You can... Uh, dabble in and you can connect with people all over the world instead of who happens to be in that coffee line it could be yeah. somebody in a different uh, country who reads it, what you put out it there it really yeah. helps people define their brand in an online world this whole digital world that really matters who are you you know you can put it out there it's really part of their resume absolutely <laughs> And we're, we're complex, right? And I think that's, so this maybe segues into another topic that I have found really interesting in pandemic times. Now that we're all Zooming and we're not meeting in person, there is a little bit of a breakdown of that professional polish and aura that we mm -hmm. felt compelled to uphold at all times. Now, if I'm going in to sell you a $10 million contract, I want to wear my suit and tie and bring my best PowerPoint presentation and all of that. Yeah. But a lot of the work that happens behind the scenes is very unsexy and messy and confusing. Uh, and now I, th I feel like that's coming a little bit more in balance. So you and I are both <laughs> on a Zoom. I've got clutter behind me. You know, I can see yeah. your office. If your dog walks in, I'm going to see your dog. And it's not really that big of a deal. No. Uh, so I really like that. Um, being able to present ourselves a little bit more uh, authentically. I, I don't, yeah. this is not something I'm suggesting you go crazy with. I don't ha I'm not wearing my ACDC t-shirt oh, or yeah. uh, have, uh, you know, a jackhammers going off in the background. That's annoying, but I do find it um, somewhat uh, exciting to be able to get to know other people in a little bit more, what feels like a more personal and complete picture of, I agree with of who I'm dealing with. You know, years ago, when I first started recording videos for uh, our website and the business, you know, I had a suit on, I'm up there doing it. And uh, I can't imagine just getting up and putting a suit on to do a video now. It would just look out of place. The world, you know, YouTube is a casual place, really, for right. the most part. Is that where we are? Are we on YouTube? <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't know. Frank, I don't know if I'm Zooming. I don't know if I'm going to meetings. I don't know if I'm on yeah. YouTube or Facebook Live. It could be anywhere these days. It's funny. So the transition from one meeting. So the way the day goes, I don't know if your day is like this. People still insist on setting meetings up, you know, yeah. uh, you know, on, on the hour, back to back. And it actually, I'm late sometimes because I got to get out of Cisco WebEx and I got to fire up Zoom and restart yeah. these things. And it reminds me of, you know, struggling to get down the hall and get to the next conference room. Yeah, funny. Yeah. The more the world changes, the more it remains the same in some That's ways. Right. Super interesting. Um, so a quick thinking checklist. I know you wrote an interesting blog post on that. What motivated you to get that one together? So I think, you know, I think about thinking a lot and um, it just dawned on me that there's a, there's a couple of different points to be aware of uh, mm -hmm. to get a little bit better. So in this crazy world at the frantic pace, which has only accelerated and become, it's become accelerated, there's more on everybody's plates. There's a lot of things to tend to. It, uh, it, it shortcuts this even more. So I really uh, put that post out there to just think about, mm -hmm. think about thinking for a minute and the value that that offers. So if I rush from one thing to the next, uh, I'm just really kind of scrambling and I'm creating more chaos for myself. Whereas if I can put myself through a little bit of an exercise to think things through a little bit more clearly, a little bit more completely, um, get my thoughts together and think strategically about how I want to approach meetings or interactions going forward, it helps. Yeah. So how do I understand what's going on? And do I have the basic analytical thinking in, you know, do I understand the thing we're talking about in detail, how the pieces fit together? And then there's another angle I put out there about uh, critical thinking. There's another way to think about this, which is 
um, you know, what is my opinion or what would I do? So a lot of times, Frank, I will approach a situation and if mm -hmm. I'm not that knowledgeable about it, I want to dig into those details. And even if I am not the decision maker or the driver, sometimes I'll put myself in that seat to think about, well, it, it, what if I push, press myself, if, if it were mm -hmm. my decision, how would I approach it? What do I think? Uh, what's my opinion of the situation? What's my opinion of what I think we should do this situation? And it just, it's a way to sort of complete the cycle yeah, so that I will go value, into it. Ultimately. I'll be able to add value, but if I'm if I'm working on that myself, and there's different levels to work on that on, right? So that mm -hmm. could just be a simple exercise that I'm working on uh, before I participate in some uh, some some collaborative working experience. Um, it's also if I am driving some larger project or initiative, I would put myself through that, but I would also start to involve other people over time. Mm -hmm. Here's what I'm thinking. What do you think, Frank? And so it's another it's another way. And then we'd have to do a series of Zoom calls because you can't walk down the halls anymore. But I might sketch out my thinking and, hey, Frank, before we go to this meeting, can you take a look at this? Here's what I'm thinking. And I will talk it through with you. And you'll give me your perspective, your insight, your ideas. And I now have the advantage of modifying what I've created and updating my thinking. I have a better understanding and I could go around to other people and sort of put that, uh, uh, put the pieces together. Too many people I see, and I'm fair enough, we're all overwhelmed with too many things to do, uh, sort of uh, outsource the thinking to everybody else. And, and the, the default comfort zone is just tell me what to do. Tell me what you want me mm -hmm. to do and I'll do that. But that's not really the path to leadership. So I, no, I or encourage even to individual success, quite honestly, and to individual success. So I yep. advocate for that, even if you are not the quote unquote official leader, exercising your thinking in that way, I think is, is what helps you make better valuable contributions, like you said, and, um, and think like a leader, lead yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, you know, funny, I think, but, um, <laughs> There is tons of research on the value of think time. It really matters. And, you know, we did a study. Uh, basically, we got assessment data from 300 corporations using our model of what drives human effectiveness and, you know, corporate effectiveness. And the best performing companies in this fourth tier, interestingly, you know, they had think people answered they had think time. So it's incredibly effective if you want to build a digital enterprise where people are actually going to innovate because they need that think time to you know come up with the creative ideas and everything in the world is designed to keep you from having that think time for yourself yes. because so i got five minutes what do i do i start scrolling twitter or let's see what's on youtube or you know there's so much information coming at us we can kid ourselves into thinking that we're doing work when it's maybe not that productive. So I, you know, there's, um, that's why I think, you know, a couple of things come to mind. One is the idea of scheduling a meeting with yourself, mm -hmm. which is basically blocking out that think time, just as you're suggesting. And I've yeah. absolutely done that in the past in my calendar, like uh, the day of back-to-back -back meetings, Never mind the logistics I was joking around about the equivalent yeah. of getting from one conference room to the other. It's just, it's just not, and I have found in the past, even if it's five minutes by myself between meetings, uh, you know, I I'll always go, guarded some time and made it my own. Oh, yeah, you have to. Otherwise, otherwise it's just chaos. You need that time to think, reflect, to maybe think through things like you were saying earlier. That's important, you know, because that allows your mind to really begin to organize a lot of the information that's swirling around. Yeah. And so that's where the, the idea behind that post is maybe a little bit of a checklisty kind of thing is, you know, what, what is my thought process for considering this? You know, do I understand uh, the pieces and how they fit together? Do yeah. I have a, a judgment I want to form on that? And what do I think if I was in charge of the world, what would my plan be going forward? Those are just some suggestions to think about. Um, and that helps you start to appreciate other people's perspective, which is, mm -hmm. it really kind of forces you to elevate. And that leads you to, well, maybe I ought to go talk to Frank about that or so-and-so about this other piece. And I really start to see the gaps in my own thinking and awareness and ability to evaluate uh, mm -hmm. something. So I'm, I'm on board with, uh, with think time. 
Yeah. And, you know, people are distracted. And, you know, they typically, most interruptions, you know, 43% of interruptions are people interrupting themselves. <laughs> when they've done studies, you know, either going to the phone, you know, having a text pop in, uh, going over to look at a video, more entertainment related, you know, checking out what happened in sports, if there were any going on. Um, but that is a study. So people tend to interrupt themselves all the time. So not just scheduling time, but putting a, having a clear space where you can work, where you don't have those distractions. Yeah, you know, the, Frank, you know, want to know the best way to get your uh, closet cleaned at home? What is S it? Sit down to write a blog post. <laughs> <laughs> and you go, well, wait a minute. I can't do this right now uh, yep. until my closet's cleaned. And then, well, okay, now the closet's clean. Let me do this. Oh, wait a minute. I haven't finished the dishes yet. Or let me check that sports score. Or yeah. let me read that article. So, you know, so this pr procrastination is another fascinating human phenomenon. It and is. What one, one trick one trick I've used with myself and written about in the past too is uh, something I, I uh, decided to call productive procrastination. So I would make a list of things to do that each one of them were productive. So instead of cleaning my closet, maybe it's filling out my expense report. So, mm -hmm. okay, I'm going to procrastinate from this thing, but I'm going to pick something else from the list and it's still something that's going to be uh, mm -hmm. productive. So I don't know if you have any ideas on sort of personal hacks like that, like you said, interrupting yourself. So I'm always trying to figure out how can I trick myself into, uh, into yeah. doing better work? Well, you've got to schedule that kind of fun time or do whatever you want time into the schedule. So you have actual work time and the whole notion of scheduling it um, <clears throat> and then tracking how you're doing. You know, did I follow the schedule today? No. Uh, you know, what percent of it did I follow? Oh, it's about 50%. So tomorrow shoot for 55%. Yeah. You know, don't shoot for a hundred because you're not going to do it. Right. And then you'll just say, this doesn't work, but you know, make <laughs> progress in little steps. And that, that is motivating. You know, this whole notion of people trying new things and feeling unqualified, you wrote about that. And we're at a time where people have to really explore and try new things. So uh, I, I put out a book a little while back called Career Leap Year, and it's uh, 52 uh, ideas. I, and the idea is to do take on one a week and try mm -hmm. some, some different uh, action items that I suggest in that book. And that's the whole idea is sort of stretching your comfort zone to, to get mm -hmm. out there and try different things. And uh, in this time of the pandemic when everything's uh, up in the air, I think people are getting more comfortable with that. But I also want to put out there a little bit more encouragement in that area because anything that you and I feel very confident and qualified in we weren't born that way you know we got there by first uh you know experimenting uh mm -hmm. struggling learning from that and I think that's a lifelong skill to yeah. to learn how to take those things on so when I'm suggesting to to folks the way to network nowadays might be to put out original content on a LinkedIn a blog uh, Facebook Live, whatever it is. And for many people, they're going to be uncomfortable with that. They may be reluctantly participating in these networks. They got on board. They're sort of waiting for the magic to happen. Uh, but if you take those baby steps, and I can assure you, my first blog post was horrible. And some people would read the one I put out last week and say it's horrible. Yeah. I don't know. But I, I know for sure that I'm getting better and I'm feeling more comfortable with it. So any of those baby steps, anything that pushes at our comfort zone is going to be valuable to us and others over the term. But I think the mm -hmm. deeper we get into our careers, we feel a little too settled in those areas. And I think just remembering that it's okay uh, uh, to be unqualified because we're all unqualified in more things than we're qualified in. So yeah. why not stick a toe in the water and start to check some things out and learn from that experience? Yeah, you know, when you look at a little child learning to speak, you know, they try to make a sound and they're learning these different, you know, phenomes. And, uh, you know, they start off and they can't say, make that sound. And slowly but surely, after maybe 100 attempts, they get it. So this is the nature of being human, is to deal with that. It, just plow through the imperfection. I think you're exactly to. right. But I'll tell you what. It's easy for kids. 
We mm -hmm. all have that ability and we don't think about it. We don't hesitate yeah. as kids to step out there, but we slowly learn over time that we hesitate and we talk ourselves out of it. And I think at this yeah. stage, and once you get uh, you know, uh, deeper into your career, you really need to sort of tap into that. And it's not right. a big deal at the end of the day. I mean, I think back to putting out my first blog posts, you know, like 10 years ago, and I've had a number of blogs on different topics. Mm -hmm. uh, and I thought, you know, I put it out under my name. It's on the internet. Anybody can see it. And I thought, boy, when I show up to work tomorrow, this is going to be weird and uncomfortable because people are going to say, I disagreed oh. with your idea. I saw, who are you to put a thing on, on the internet? And mm -hmm. I, it was, it's by the way, it's not a good idea. And it's, meanwhile, I walk down the hall the next day and for many days after that, and there's silence <laughs> because no. nobody is really paying that close attention to what you're doing. Not at all. You know, and there are billions of things getting posted every day. Exactly. So then you find out the challenges. Geez, I do want people to be looking at this and 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 yeah. and responding to it and reading it. And I do want to be seen and heard in that forum. And that's where if you write about something that you know about, that you care about, that you're passionate about, that's going to come across. And I'm saying, right, it could be a podcast, a video or, yeah. or any other form of thing, making an infographic. But if you put things out that you really are interested in, believe in, you are, are going to find other people mm -hmm. out of those millions that are attracted to that. And you're going to be glad that you did connect yeah. with those folks. And uh, taking interest in things reminds me of uh, your blog post, Take the Long Form, right? So in this, I am sort of, it's an ode to uh, things that are in long form, right? So I, I like to read books uh, mm -hmm. and, and, well, I don't know if that's the place to start. Maybe a better place to start would be we, where you, what you were talking about before, right? We're, we have this barrage of 24-hour news cycle. I mean, the breaking news, news is breaking uh, more than it's fixed these days. Yeah. Uh, you got your Twitter stream, your Facebook, your, you know, and if you're going to participate in social media and any of this other stuff, it's sort of chaos. Friends texting you, uh, work texting you, whatever. A amount of yeah, stuff coming through all the time. So there's tremendous value I find in things like a book. So I feel very relaxed and like I'm learning something and like I can enter uh, the piece of a different world in a book. And I read a lot of nonfiction. So let's say I'm trying to build up my career and my uh, capability in a certain area. So reading a, a nonfiction book, and it could be a fiction book, would work the same. I'm a nonfiction guy more than that. Um, so I agree. Yeah. So you immerse in that. You get lost in that world and you can sure. be... You're exercising what Nicholas Carr was talking about in his book, The Shallows, was this fear he had for humanity that you lose the ability for what they call deep thinking. So anytime you can exercise that muscle to be sort of deeper in thought for a longer period of time, that's a muscle you want to build. But once you go into the long form, so this video that we're on right now is fantastic content that people should immerse themselves in for the full length of the episode. I totally agree. Uh, to do that. And there's many people out there that put out content like you do that I absorb like that. So there are podcast interviews that I've listened to that are two and a half hours long. And yeah. you're listening to two people usually in a conversation and it's something you're interested in and it gets to places you're never ever going to get to in a six minute interview on the tonight show or whatever the other mm -hmm. that, you know, the, the lightweight, uh, blurby, uh, sensational article things, over sensationalized, not information rich at all. So a relief from that is to is to go to this this long form, and that's where I feel like I have more opportunity to learn and grow and take in things and see things. You know, like there, my, I was listening to an interview last week that was an over an hour long with uh, Hugh Jackman, mm -hmm. and I'm not even like I'm aware of him. He's a big A list star, but I don't really not yeah. really a fan of his stuff. As a person in this interview. Uh, for over an hour, it went into all kinds of directions and, and depth that you wouldn't get anywhere else. And it was just really mm -hmm. fascinating to hear an interesting person uh, yeah. talk about lots of different things in that long form content. Yeah, I think so much content is just a soundbite today. <clears throat> you know, there's not a lot of substance to it. It's not helpful. And people like that passive, you know, really short microburst stuff. That's what they're into because they get a dopamine rush a lot of times, you know, and their the body rewards them for getting that quick rush. And it's a, it's a, it is a false narrative that that's what everybody wants though. 
So there are huge audiences for tons of long form content out there. It gets ignored because I guess that's not a sexy thing to talk about. And that's what I was highlighting. Like I'm not the only one listening to these interviews or reading, you know, 10,000 yeah. word essays online. I like the long ones too. I frequently listen to stuff that's meaty. Yeah. I find it very interesting. But we're here to try to give people ideas that, you know, they can apply in their own life and improve themselves. So, I mean, that's a good one, you know, break away from the sound bites. You know, turn yes. the news off and all that, you know, fear porn <clears throat> that's, that's <laughs> being constantly projected to try to get people hooked. Yeah. And they do it because it works. And your yeah. tw Twitter feed is addictive uh, because it works. I mean, it that's a, that's a, that's what we, I talked about, uh, you know, before, like the world is designed to interrupt you from yourself. Uh, so there's a lot mm -hmm. of people, you know, benefit from that. And yeah. uh, you, you have to fight that fight on your own. Yeah, I think it's, you know, good for people to disrupt themselves a little. You know, there you go. Something new. There you go. Because you know, the world is certainly working hard to disrupt you. So you might as well do it yourself, but do it in a good way. That's right. Really important. So let's get into uh, meetings. Because you wrote yes. a post on having effective meetings. Now I'll tell you, unproductive meetings is an enormous problem. In yes. So many companies that always comes up as a high ranking problem. when We go out, we, you know, assess the state of productivity in a company. And there are a lot of proven techniques for doing it. I was fascinated that you found an article in 1973 that turned out to be just really, really well done. Right. So this how to run a good meeting has been known for a very long time. Yeah, it was interesting. So I was researching that article and um, I found that article from the Harvard Business Review in 1976, uh, a okay. yeah, guy named uh, Centennial, Bicentennial Year, a uh, guy named Anthony Jay wrote this article. And, you know, this was also back in the day, I think, when there was a, a higher tolerance or desire for more long form content. So I think mm -hmm. I printed it out. It might be 27 pages long or something like Ooh. that. And wow. I was uh, fascinated by this because it's very well put together, uh, clearly by somebody who's very knowledgeable. But the fascinating thing was, uh, I don't know, you help me with the math here. What's it, 36, 34, 44 years later, whatever it is, decades mm -hmm. later. Yeah. My God, is that 44 years? Is my math correct? Years. Yeah. yeah, 44 years. So four and a half decades later, everything in that article held true. Wow. Uh, you know, all, all the, yeah, all the dynamics, because at, at a higher level, it's not about are we on Zoom or go to meeting or whatever's happening in the world around us. It's really about gathering as humans. It's the human side of it, like you like to talk mm -hmm. about. And, you know, there is, there is a fundamental value to a meeting, which, you know, in one way, like he says in the article, uh, defines us as a group, right? So like, mm -hmm. I know that I'm in this group or not in this group, whether I'm in the meeting or not in the meeting. And the leader's job is to, is to, you know, mm -hmm. support that identity and uh, uh, cultivate the, establish the clear goals and uh, collaborate with everybody to uh, work towards what that what that is. And so it really kind of breaks down to I so I riffed off of his fundamental concept that really looking at the subject matter and the people are the two fundamental things that that, that the meeting is about. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, what the leaders got to do is clarify the purpose and goals, build commitment and self confidence of the people to contribute, right? So you've got to mm -hmm. be able to parse out I think spend some time knowing the subject yourself. So we talked about thinking before, right? Like, like mm -hmm. the analytical thinking, like what are the mechanics? What are the pieces? How do they fit together? The critical thinking, like what do I, what's my evaluation of this and where do I think it needs to be fixed and how are we going to move forward? Yeah, that uh, whole prep up front to get your arms around the subject matter. People come in and they just ramble. And exactly. So that's the other part of it is the people side of it, which is the more mm -hmm. fascinating side. And the, the leader of that meeting really has to balance and work with both of those things. And it takes a lot of preparation. So who should be at the meeting? Uh, what's their role? What are the dynamics of the meeting? So if you're the meeting leader and you're not um, corralling that person who's rambling on forever, you are doing a, the whole team a, a disservice, and so this is this is not an easy job. It's so the reason why we're in a, we're all in still bad meetings, you know, mm -hmm. decades later, as long as people have been writing about meetings, is they're really hard to run one well. Yeah. 
Uh, but because people are so overwhelmed with demands, they don't prepare. So you have to make it clear what you're expecting of them in the meeting. Yeah. And I would, I'm arguing in this article that it's your job as the leader to help them prepare. Frank, we're going to the meeting next week. Uh, you're the expert on uh, this topic. And, you know, what do you think about it? So we can, we can sort of merge a lot of the ideas we've been talking yeah. about, right? So I'm trying to think things through. I want to get your input and weigh in, and I'm going to ask you to uh, prepare in a certain way for this meeting, and I'm going to do that with everybody. And mm -hmm. then I'm going to set up an agenda that's very specific that leads to not just a vague list of sort of things that, you know, general areas to talk about, but what's the item? What's the purpose? Is it is it on the agenda to share information? Yeah. Is it something we need to uh, discuss and evaluate together? Is there, does it need to end in a decision? You have to be clear on the purpose of each of these things mm -hmm. and bring everybody together to, and you have to keep that on track like we talked about. Yeah, and you know, summarize what the agreements are, right? Make sure everybody knows what the outcome of the meeting was, what was actually agreed to, you know, document it. Yeah, uh, most people don't do the important things that really matter. So the meetings ramble on. I've also seen, you know, a lot of companies just decided they were going to, you know, outsource their people to cheaper labor. Yeah. And, you know, there are these key hubs and the real kind of the people, the go-to people who have very deep institutional knowledge. And as that layer is gone to get together enough people who really know a complex subject and can drive the decision forward is very difficult because they've lost, you know, a lot of the institutional knowledge and they just don't have it. To make well, the yeah, the secret sauce is often well outside of the formal organization chart and people's specific job descriptions, right? Mm -hmm. And we're talking about the human side of work here and how we yeah. can do better uh, for ourselves, for the organizations we work for and how we can help other people do better and the and the secret sauce is is well outside of those norms yeah. and i've always been a big fan as a manager of you know shifting the organizational structure and people's roles to fit what they're good at and how it's going to glue together versus versus having some kind of clean textbook theoretical thing that i relentlessly apply to people <laughs> yeah. who are uh, human and ha we all have our strengths and weaknesses and different abilities to contribute and if you can figure out how to work with that secret sauce a little bit better. I think you'll have the, mm -hmm. the kind of success. It's the kind of thing that exactly what you just said, that's too often overlooked. Yeah. It's, um, you know, this meeting, meeting effectiveness will continue to be a problem until they address some of these fundamental issues, like people having much too much on their plate, no think time. You know, these are the things that make it difficult to run a good meeting actually. Because people are running from meeting to meeting. They don't have time to prep for the next meeting. Right. And that prep time is undervalued, but it's the secret to everything. Uh, so, yeah. you know, when I have to run a large initiative, I do a, a lot of think time, but I, I put it on myself to actually write it out. I, use, I write a lot of documents for, for big initiatives, and mm -hmm. I will walk it around and get input and feedback from everybody. And it's doing two things. I'm getting the benefit of their perspective and their insight, but I'm also socializing my own thinking and yeah. structure on this. And then it's something that can be a foundational element for going forward. But by really thinking it through uh, before we get into the, the melee mm -hmm. and while we're ramping that up, I find it to be a touchstone that I go back to over and over again because – Six months ago when I started this initiative, what exactly was I thinking and what was the idea behind this and why did we go left instead of right at that turn? Mm -hmm. I probably couldn't even tell you myself, right? Yeah. But if I have my document and I've socialized it and had that series of discussions with others on it, um, we have that touchstone and we have a way to keep each other accountable and to share that, um, that or preserve that sh and evolve that shared memory. Yeah, so Tom, I think we're uh, approaching the end here, time-wise. Yes. Um, do you have uh, any other thoughts you want to share with uh, our audience? I, I just hope people keep watching content like this uh, and learning that, uh, watching your show and learning about, you know, ask yourself, uh, what can I do to be better today? How can I, how can I, how can I look at these challenges before me as opportunities? 
uh, to learn, to grow, to try and do better. Uh, because if you, at the end of the day, you are this, I believe we're all the CEO of ourselves. So if I'm the, if I think like the CEO of me, I'm faced with some challenges that I plan to overcome, learn from and grow uh, well outside of the boundaries of whatever job I, I happen to have today or whatever challenges I'm facing today. So if you uh, approach your career in that way, I think you personally will be served well, but also mm -hmm. you're going to be way more valuable to everybody else around you that you're working for. Yeah. That will be recognized. Yeah. Uh, people should make one small improvement every day. Do something. It's not that hard. You know, organize your calendar a little differently. Put some free time in. Monitor how you're doing. Maybe put together a list of things you want to tackle that are new. Disrupt yourself a little bit. Start playing with things knowing you're going to be imperfect. It's all good. Good stuff. Well, listen, buddy, really appreciate it. People should go to work smarter, stress less, and sign up. Lots of good information, no charge. Some of the best things in life are free. My Smarter Sundays newsletter comes out every Sunday morning. Yep, it's good. I'm a, and I'm, I'm a subscriber, so. Awesome. Look forward to it. Hey, be well, take care. Thank right, you. Thanks, see you later.